What is that? Whoa. Huh? I think it's a fox that's got the mange. It looks terrible. Oh, oh. Why are you gonna kill me? <laughs> I'm gonna do the fuel filter change. Now I know there's a lot of folks that have a question about doing this. If you see the how-to videos online, they're mostly pickup trucks and the fuel filter is right out, really easy to reach on the pickup truck 7.3. But when you're in the van here, you've got to remove your whole air box assembly here, which is not a big deal. It's, it's these two bolts here and then these two up here and the whole air box assembly comes out. You disconnect the snorkel tube. Now I have also got the snorkel tube out. So I can see my I can see my filter here really easy. If you still have your air tube in here, you're you can do it, but it's kind of in the way. You're gonna have to push it over to the side as best you can. So this is the fuel filter cap right here. Now, one thing that is suggested is you drain some of the fuel out because it's basically a cup that the filter sits down into and then there's a screw off lid on top. So that cup is full of fuel right now. So what you're going to want to do on the back side of it, there's a little lever and you can see it from inside the truck. Well, I can see it because I have the turbo and everything out. But if you reach to the back of it, it's basically a little lever and you move it to that side and it lets fuel out it releases the pressure and it lets fuel come out now that fuel is going to run down the back of the engine and down onto the ground not the greatest thing you drain it for one second you throw the lever one second and then close it again so you're really just releasing the pressure and a little bit of fuel so it drops down the level so i just did that i put a drain pan up under the truck to catch it. Let's see how much came out. So that's it. You know, it smells more than, I, than it is. <laughs> you know, diesel's got that odor. We all know it. So not a lot. So I've let the pressure off. Now I can go ahead and remove the cap. Now this is where this tool that was sent to me, that's where this comes into play. These caps don't have any way to attach a tool. So this tool allows you to put a 3 8 drive ratchet right on there. So this tool can be used for the 7.3 and I think these are, the other side is for the 6 liter. Damn, it's tight. Shouldn't be that tight. Damn, why is that so tight? Uh, always some kind of challenge, right? Jesus. Wow. That should be between 10 and 15 foot-pounds. That thing is stuck on there. How the heck am I going to get this thing off? I'm going to go from the inside and see if that's any better. to read up on what to do here. Well, what I ended up doing, and I guess I didn't catch it on camera, I took a hammer and my big flat bladed screwdriver and I hammered the screwdriver into the like outer edge of that cap. You know, the cap is plastic. So I, I hammered, you know, so basically hammering a, a groove into the outer edge of it and as I hammered 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 it actually spun the cap hey brother 
I'm talking to your folks. Gabba, 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 gabba. R, R, R. Can I finish? Thank you. Got my drain pan down here. Uh, I'm gonna drop the filter on it once I pull it out of here. It's gonna be dripping. Rag under it here. There we go. So this one, this is a beveled O-ring, and I'll show you how the new one goes back on to make sure you get it. It is directional. So that's that's the fuel filter bowl right there. So it's just a cup. This is the top O-ring, and it's beveled. If you can see the shape of that. So it, it goes on just like I'm holding it here. So flat side up, bevel side down. Well, you know what's interesting? That's the way it was on there. The instructions on here say the exact opposite. Flat side down, bevel side up. Wow. So this was on upside down, it looks like. And then on the bottom of the, f the fuel filter, there's another O-ring. So this filter I bought came with both the new gaskets the beveled one and the o-ring and that tool that I used one of the teeth broke off because I was putting so much force on it trying to get that thing loose that one of the teeth broke now when I put this back on they say between 10 to 15 foot pounds which is not tight at all that's a little more than hand tight I can use my torque wrench I can put it on and torque it to 12 foot pounds and that's going to make it really easy to get off next time. So the tool is still usable. There's plenty of teeth on it. Even though with one missing, I'll still be able to use it, thankfully. So here's my previous lid. Now they sell lids. They sell lids that have uh, a hex nut kind of molded into them so you can get a wrench on them. They also have lids that have a, a square, like, 3 8 drive hole in them, which is great. This one obviously had none of those things. So that tool was the only way you can get a hold of this. Now you can see there where I, I knocked the groove into it and got it to spin. I didn't nick the filter housing at all. I was only hammering right into the, the plastic here. You can see mine was deteriorated, and that's what happens to these. They come apart. Um, you know, if they get manhandled when they're trying to get loosened off, if they're tight, these fins break. I can see some marks here where somebody used like some some big channel locks on it before. Um, but I'm going to tighten it to 12 foot pounds, and that's going to be the end of the problems. And I can see the center post is busted off of the old one here. It's supposed to have a center pin right there that locates and holds down the filter. That's broken. Turn this right around and we're going to get the new one put right back in to get that closed up. Here's the new filter. So it came with this O-ring, which goes in this groove right here. Now there is an instruction card that came with the filter, which is good because I've never done this before. They definitely had this uh, beveled adapter on upside down. It's supposed to be that way, according to these instructions. So flat side down, beveled edge up. Apply a coating of diesel fuel to the new bevel gasket and O-ring. Install the bevel gasket under the housing gland and install the O-ring into the element guard, into the element gland. All right, so let's put some diesel on this and we'll put it in that groove. So that's lubed up. Now it goes in this groove. So this is the top of the filter. That's the bottom. So you can see it's a two-stage. It has this outer mesh screen, and then inside it's got the standard like paper filter cartridge. Okay, let me just double check here. Yep. So flat side down, flat side, beveled side. They definitely had it upside down. So what it does is it seals the lid. So this goes on the top of the housing, and then the cap goes on there and tightens down onto it. So this is what keeps it from leaking fuel out of the unit. Plus it has to hold pressure. All right, I'm gonna put the filter in. 
so that should be it for the fuel filter a little bit more difficult than I thought but um, it was over tight and I had to resort to a hammer and screwdriver so you can get them off if they're over tight it just takes a little bit of extra work and again when you're doing this and you still have your air box and everything you got to remove your main air box and then ideally you would remove the, the the snorkel that then goes back to the turbo input it's one clamp but you can also kind of push it out of your way it is rubber it is flexible you can move it out of the way uh, it would just be a lot easier with it pulled out let's take a look at this old filter that we pulled out I can't believe they had this on upside down you know it's it's dark um, it's hard to tell without cutting it open which I'm not gonna do it needed to be changed because if they did change it back when I had it done that was two years ago so I'm gonna start changing this fuel filter maybe every two oil changes which would be every 10,000 miles I'm gonna read up on it and see what's recommended because I know I know diesel fuel is just filthy dirty I'll have to see how changing it goes without you know when I have the engine all back together how difficult it is if it's easy uh, I'll do it way more frequently if it's a pain in the butt <laughs> I'll do it less frequently but I am going to read up and see what's recommended I'm just going to let this sit here on the pan and drain all the way and then I'll bag it up and chuck it out just so it's not stinking in the garbage tote hi everyone we are over at the town park doing a little walk this morning so we are, uh, I think we're nine days away from leaving. So we're end of August and it's a beautiful morning. For, for end of August, it's probably, well yesterday we got up in the like 86 degrees yesterday. And this morning it feels like a midsummer day. You know, for this end of August here in New York, having a, a warm warm morning with a breeze and leave it somebody's socks <clears throat> having a nice feeling morning like this it's just feels great you know I did a lot of whining this summer about the weather and the humidity and all that but it's this breeze that really makes the difference you can see everything blowing here that really makes it feel great what a beautiful morning I wanted to uh, talk about what happened yesterday on Sunday so I looked at the weather forecast and it said you know it was going to be in the, in the high 80s so I text Dalen and said hey let's take the dogs up to the beach this might be our last chance before we take off so we did like about 11 a.m we went up there and it's about you know it's 15 20 minute drive to get up to the lake to the beach and so we drove up there well i hope you're not getting hammered with the wind I'm sorry well, we got up there uh, we got out of the car there's about a 25 30 foot plot of grass then you get to the the tr walking trail and then you cut down the little hill right onto the beach. Well, we didn't even make it across the grass. And suddenly Lefty is standing there with his right paw up in the air. He's hurt. And Dalen's like, oh no. And so I'm, I said, oh no. And I, so I look at his paw. And, and then Dalen mentions that, she goes, maybe it's the bee. There's bees all over the place. Yellow jackets. All in the grass. So after she said that. I looked at his paw again, and sure enough, up in his main pad, you know, way up on the side of his main pad, there was a stinger in there. So I got a hold of it and yanked it out, and there's a red, you know, so he's got a red mark. It's starting to turn red already. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to just get him to walk it off, you know. But I guess it really bothered him. He gimped our way down into the water, and he was, um, you know, he swam for a minute, but then he's like in the water wanting to pick up his paw and lick it. So he's, he's not wanting to put any weight on his paw. He wants to lick it. 
So I, I'm like, sweetheart, we got to go. You know, this is not going to work. So we, we were on the beach for maybe five minutes, and we packed up and got in the car and went back home. I got super frustrated. First thing is I've never, I think he, he used to grab bees out of the air. And I think, well, I'm pretty sure he got stung in his mouth a couple times. But then he learned not to do that anymore. You know, I'm talking years ago. I think, you know, this time I actually, you know, I know there was a stinger in there. I pulled it out. So while we're driving, I had Dale and Dr. Google it. And they say, you know, you, same thing you do for a, a human bee sting. The baking soda, put it on there, ice for the swelling. And, you know, we're, we're driving, so I can't do any of this. And he's, at this time, laying in the back seat, just licking, licking, licking the paw, you know, his pads. And so we, you know, got back home, and he... Now, today, he's, he's fine, you know. It lessened, you know, over a couple of hours after it happened till he was finally back walking on it normally, and now today, it's like it never happened. But just really frustrated yesterday. I felt bad because... Dalen and I had packed up and driven all the way up there, and um, Lefty just couldn't. He went out and swam one little loop, and but then when it was time to put his feet back on the ground, he wouldn't put that paw down, and he kept wanting to. He kept wanting to lick it. You know, he's standing in 12 inches of water, and he like kept wanting to put his head down in the water to lick his paw, but he couldn't. So it was really some odd movements and everything he was making. I felt bad for him, but uh, he's okay today. Yellow jackets, and the thing is, when we got back home, there were bees all over at the house, too. And the, I the, spoke to the woman that lives next door, and she said, yeah, she got stung the other day. Um, so this is like bee season here, but they were all over down at the beach. They were They were going after me, as I'm trying to get Lefty situated and get him back up to the car, the bees were all over going after me. So we're going back to the house after we're done walking here this morning, and I've got several projects on the truck that I need your help with. You know, just basically handing me tools and stuff and holding the end of the tape measure and things like that. So we'll get those things done. I got one pretty neat thing that's Probably a couple years overdue, but I'm finally getting around to doing it. I came up with a way to do it, so I want to show that to everybody. Everyone that has solar panels on their roof is going to be interested in this. So let, we're going to finish our walk on this beautiful, beautiful late August summer morning. Oh, yeah, eating some grass. I wanted, the other day on the video, someone commented that when we were walking up this hill here from the creek, that this was a stand of cannabis, of marijuana. It's not. Um, this is just your everyday run-of-the-mill weeds that grow around here. Uh, but when they said that, and they gave me the timestamp in the video, I went and looked, and I'm like, because I, I was ready to get in the car and drive back over here. <laughs> but I looked in the video, and I recognized, you know, what weeds they are, and I know they're not... This is not marijuana for sure. Ask me how I know that. But you guys have some eagle eyes in the videos, I'll tell you. Come on, pup. Come on. There you go.